All right, everyone, it is time to get started. I just wanted to uh, quickly say thank you for being a part of this conversation. Uh, and we will be effective, we will be quick, and hopefully we'll be good, uh, but you'll be the judge of that. Uh, so my name is Brett Sklar. I am the managing partner here at Grow Powerful. We are a fractional CMO services business uh, focused on emerging B2B technology companies, uh, working with VC-backed companies as well as private equity-backed companies. Um, I thought about doing this event as an open mic discussion. I prefer those. But then I realized people probably don't want to share that they're interested in leaving their existing company or share that they're even looking at it. So I decided to keep it closed uh, for that purpose. So I apologize. I do want to hear from you. So if you want to chat, please chat. If you want to ask a question, please dive into the Q&A feature. And uh, let's go ahead and, and we can ask things in that Q&A feature that you should see right there at the bottom of your screen if you haven't done it before. Uh, but I would definitely love to hear from you and see what you have to say or what your thoughts are about this model we're going to talk about today. Um, also, you probably see me in the corner here. My slides aren't that magical. So if you want to drag over and make me half the screen and the slides half the screen, that's cool. Or you just sort of zoom me out uh, and just look at the slides because you don't like the way that I look, that's fine too. Especially if you're on the podcast uh, listening, you obviously can't see it. Um, we have uh, actually some uh, new channels of content that we're going to be distributing. This will be available both on our Vimeo channel uh, called Grow Up, as well as on our podcast, uh, which is also called Grow Up with Grow. Uh, so would love to have you subscribe to those if you're interested in hearing what we've got going on. Uh, my goal, my mission is to find the greatest marketing minds in B2B technology and bring them together. And that's what our topics, that's what our discussions will be all about. So who is Grow? Let's just dive in here. Um, Grow is a firm that has fractional CMOs or what we call ICMOs, interim CMOs. And we bring them together to help emerging and established B2B technology companies with a CMO position, either because they're not big enough to need a full-time CMO and so a fractional uh, makes more sense financially as well as resources, or with larger companies when there is an interim change. Um, and, and I've got several examples that I'm going to hop through uh, where we talk about that experience. But I love, love, love being a fractional CMO. And I want to talk to you why, from my perspective, why I have so much fun doing it and why uh, I'd like to maybe not, you know, try to convince you to come over here to the, the, the light side, but um, but maybe it is something you're thinking about long-term or other ways that you can engage, like sending us referrals. Uh, so we'll talk about that. So let's dive in. Um, again, my name is Brett Sklar. I've been a B2B tech growth strategist for over 150 years. Uh, sorry, did I exaggerate there? For about 25 years, I've been involved in B2B technology. I have been VP of marketing. I've been CMO. Uh, and then I've been an ICMO, and I love the ICMO model better. Um, prior to this, and then prior to being a chief marketing officer for a, a short period of time, um, I ran an agency that was called Market Creation Group uh, here in Denver, Colorado. Uh, grew pretty aggressively, got pretty big, and then we were bought by a private equity firm uh, quite a while ago. So I've got experience with high growth environments, both with myself as well as with our clients. But then about Grow. Uh, Grow was created by a team of CMO, Chief Marketing Officer Juggernauts. Uh, and we decided um, really during the peak of the pandemic that we wanted to offer more flexibility and more capability for people to really have fun and do what they love and get rid of the, the stuff that really bogs people down during their day. Uh, so we're a little over 18 months old. We're now on a run rate of about 1.8 million. Uh, so we've had a lot of success early on, uh, and we've got three CMOs, either active or uh, in some role, uh, that are working with us today. So let's dive in. Uh, the seven reasons why being an ICMO is greater than, there's that math equation there, greater than being a CMO. Um, and let's just talk about number one. Uh, flexibility, I think we all use flexibility as a primary driver these days, flexibility and being able to work from home, flexibility and being able to do what you love. 
But there are a lot of challenges with, with flexibility and how people work within their organizations, especially as a chief marketing officer. Um, I've found that there are some CMOs that are masterful and magical at um, creating the role and creating the function of marketing within an organization and creating that ability to have flexibility. However, most organizations don't allow the level of flexibility that people would want. So when you're an ICMO, you know, you're valued not just for uh, how much time you spend in an office or available via Slack or Teams, but you're actually valued on the effectiveness of your ideas. And because of that, you're given a lot more flexibility, a lot more leeway as this outside expert uh, to come in. Um, so you get measured on the stuff that matters, not on how many meetings you were a part of, where you were on a certain day, or where you weren't on a certain day. And it affords a level of flexibility that I've not seen before working for companies. And, and I love it. I personally love it. So that's flexibility. And there's a lot of different aspects of flexibility. Um, another way to look at flexibility is you get to choose who you work with and who you don't want to work with. Um, I, the way Grow does our business is we do everything with a 30-day uh, out clause. In other words, when we engage with our clients, they can terminate with us or we can terminate with them with a 30-day notice. And that will always be that way. Um, sometimes there are environments where the CMOs are not respected or an outside person is not respected and you don't feel like it's the right place for you. There are other times where the companies themselves need to either um, step out or step down from their engagement for a variety of reasons. And so because of that, um, you know, you get to have the flexibility of how to work, when to work and where to work with these companies. Obviously, it's almost all remote now, um, but, but you get this opportunity to work with the companies you want to and not work with the companies you don't want to. And part of this ICMO army that I'm trying to grow is that if for some reason there's not something working out with a chief marketing officer and their client, we can switch out with a different chief marketing officer when we need to. Or there may be a chief marketing officer that is stronger on brand and at a certain point, <clears throat> excuse me, after 90 days, the, the, there might be a different need, someone who's a stronger focus on demand generation. So we can swap people out as we need or as we want. And so that choice of who to work with and when to work with them, I think works out really well. Number three, the freedom to do what you do best. So back to that idea of you may be the strongest at brand strategy, you might be the strongest at employer branding. You might be the strongest at demand generation. You might be strongest at content marketing. Well, you know, our frustration in life happens when we are doing things that are not a sweet spot for us, uh, that are not a core strength of ours, and we're trying to fake it to make it happen or trying to build a team to do those great things. In this environment, you don't really have to fake it. You've got a team of people that you can count on, that you can pick from, that can help you accomplish your goals as the needs of the client changes. And that's something I love is there's certain things I do best. I'm best on brand strategy. I'm best on creating a framework. But when it comes to the execution of demand generation, that's not my sweet spot. And I would gladly transition to others when we get to that mature place with our clients that we're doing that marketing machine, which is really where the rubber you know, meets the road and where the magic happens. The fourth thing is, and I don't know if you've done any consulting, I've spent more of my life consulting than being inside of a company and I love it. For some reason, even though you're paid as an employee, the fact that you're paid as an outside consultant, there is a mindset of bringing a better idea or a more thought out process um, to the company than if you're on the inside. Most of the time we work with CEOs uh, of these companies and we're not even a part of the marketing budget. We're a part of a strategy or a growth budget. And because we are brought in by the CEO or by the VC or private equity firm, we're thought of with a greater level of respect than most employees, even if those employees have strong industry knowledge and strong industry insight. And there's a psychology to it. I'm not uh, a psychologist. I just have seen this happen firsthand. 
you get more respect as an outsider than you get being within a company. And it just is the way that the world works. So then let's go to the fifth variety. I get bored very quickly. I am not the only one that get bo gets bored very quickly. Um, many of you probably get bored very quickly. And once you've established a process, once you've established, established a framework, um, you may be bored. Or once you've brought your greatness in and you've been able to get things in place over a three month, a six month or a nine month process, you may be ready for the next challenge or the next opportunity. Grow is trying to build that machine of finding the opportunities for every single one of our ICMOs so that an ICMO can switch, they can um, introduce into, get introduced into new clients, uh, we can bring new clients to them. And so the opportunity for variety is better than, than anything uh, as an ICMO, much more than a CMO. Now, I'm not here to bash people that are full-time chief marketing officers in their companies. There is a, uh, a capability and a um, ability to manage up and manage across that I am impressed with from a lot of people that I have not had a lot of success in my career with. Uh, so people are able to do that. That's great for me. I like to go in. I like to solve big, hairy problems. Uh, I like to work with the incredibly senior parts of a leadership team. And I like to build and establish processes that are repeatable that make that growth machine work and then step out and go on to the next one. And in this model, it's not a bad thing to switch jobs. It is by design to switch jobs. Number six, um, and, and uh, there's an irony here, I'm actually engaged in getting married in a month, so um, I'm hoping for my eternal honeymoon. But you get this eternal honeymoon period. Um, love is in the air, at least for the first few months. Uh, you've seen this, I've seen this, we've all seen this. Things are great for the first 90 days um, before, and then all of a sudden, you know, it starts to get a little bit ugly. Um, or there's a lot of... Um, uh, buried bones that start to get exposed and brought up uh, from, from underneath. Um, I absolutely love the honeymoon period. I love the first three, six, nine months where we're building uh, uh, a, a process, we're solving problems, we're establishing a brand, uh, and we're really putting companies on the map, especially early and emerging stage companies. Um, there's nothing more fun than really getting things going. In this model, where our typical engagements are between six and nine months, you can live the life of an eternal honeymoon period. Um, and you're, you're always sort of getting introduced, bringing things into place, making a big impact. And we'll talk about impact next. Um, and then, and then you know, you're really on to the next thing. And it's fun to be in that honeymoon period. Uh, it's fun to be in that new, fresh, you know, that new car, that new CMO smell environment. Um, so that you can, you know, go on to the next thing. And it, it, there's a lot of confidence that's gained. There's a lot of um, uh, fun to be had um, to be in that eternal honeymoon period. And then, like I said, number seven is you can actually make a real impact. Now, I admire chief marketing officers or VPs of marketing that are inside of companies that are able to make a true impact and keep that impact going for a long time. In my case, and in a lot of people's cases, what we've seen is that you might make one big key impact and then you get mired down in the details or problems or personality problems or people problems or change. In this case, as an ICMO, as somebody that is designed by design to come in, solve specific growth problems, and then by design leave, um, you can make a real impact. You can really make a lot of change happen. Um, and, and, and I think for our egos, for our confidence, for our feeling of accomplishment, the more times we can step in and make an impact and then step out, the more we feel satisfied and fulfilled in what we're doing. I, this is the place where I feel most fulfilled. This is the place where I get in um, I can be the, the, the vent of people. So people call me to complain about processes that are broken, that things that need to be fixed. I can come in, build a process, see it come to life, see it take off, and then either move on to the next challenge 
or move on to the next company. Um, and that impact is real and that impact is felt. And I just haven't, as a CMO, seen that ability to make impact after impact after impact that feeds my soul, that feeds my mission um, and, and brings me fulfillment by um, helping companies out. So, you know, I, I talked about where we are with our company. We've had a lot of success. Um, you know, a couple of them I want to talk through here. Um, our engagements, and I want to talk about our engagements, they are month-to-month -month retainers. They are designed to say, we're going to keep supporting you until one of us says stop. So we start an engagement, and we've always got a 30-day out clause, whether we decide as the ICMO or the client decides um, to change things. But within 30 days, they can move the engagement up, they can move the engagement out, down, or they can move the engagement completely out or terminate. Um, wanted to mention a couple of our clients here. Um, and, and these are, are not just clients, they're now good friends. Um, we have a process, the five phases of market-led growth that we use. Um, and there's a webinar we did before that um, is up on our Vimeo channel um, that we can talk through this. Uh, we'll also upload it to our podcast uh, to have it there. But we have a process we go through. And, and what's fun is from day one of our strategy lab, we can really provide a transformative experience. And in fact, on that top middle uh, quotable there, um, you know, uh, it, it was really cool. We were out to dinner with this person uh, and, and there was a friend of mine that was with me and we were talking about the day and the woman that was the main part of this, she was in tears and she said, I can't believe how transformable that are transformative that one day was. Um, we got it. We understood the needs. We asked good questions, put a solid path forward. What she said was, if we stop our engagement right there, uh, we would have gotten the value out of every dollar we spent. It was amazing. Now they kept going for another five months after that. Uh, so it was a six month engagement. Um, but I love hearing things like that. And, and people don't talk about their employees that way, unfortunately. Uh, uh, as often as we'd like them to. Um, you know, there's another engagement um, that we're currently in. Um, and so, for example, that, that first engagement is approximately a $20,000 a month engagement. Uh, there's another engagement that started out at a $20,000 engagement and now is about $80,000 a month uh, engagement where we're working with a company that we were an interim, uh, an ICMO that was brought in during a transition from a CMO to another CMO. And when the new CMO came in, they saw what we were doing. They saw the process we built. And I think it's been about nine months and the engagement keeps getting bigger. And we're now working with the CMO as the, as the support ICMO. And <laughs> we have become invaluable to them to the point where well, even when we try to phase it down to move on, uh, they continue to ask us to, to do more with them. Um, in that scenario, it's not just about being a fractional ICMO. I've got a team of amazing people, of content writers, demand gen managers, social media, uh, project leads that are working um, together on this client to really help uh, move the needle forward in their growth strategy. So our engagements, and the reason why I talk about the size of our engagements is because, and we'll talk about this on another webinar or another podcast, but our engagements um, are important because as an ICMO, um, and we're not the only company to do fractional CMO services, um, but there are a couple of things that we think are very different. Uh, and number one is, the reason why I say the size of the engagement is we actually um, take less of the money from the ICMO than most other fractional CMO services. Some fractional CMO services, you start out and you get 55% of the deal. And at best, uh, move your way up, you get maybe 75%. Um, our engagements start at 70% and can move up to 85%, uh, depending on, on your engagement, on whether you bring the lead or not, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, by the way, we also have a fantastic referral program. If you know of somebody looking for a CMO or a fractional CMO and you bring them to us and we win the business, 
um, you get in perpetuity of that deal uh, a certain percentage of the deal. So we're always looking for companies and looking for leaders who are looking for a fractional CMO. Um, the, the other thing I'll talk about, um, and, and you can go to our website, growpowerful.io, and you can submit a form to, uh, to provide us a lead, and then we will, again, share our win with you in perpetuity. Um, I want to dive into this conversation in, in the next webinar as well, and it's not just talking about why it's better to be an ICMO than being a CMO, but I want to dispel the fears and the myths that take place um, as, as a fractional CMO. Um, there's concerns like, will I make enough money? Well, the answer is actually you, you make more money. Um, the question of, you know, am I going to feel established or consistent? And the answer is yes, because what Grow is building is a system, is an infrastructure, is a community of ICMOs. So we can all feel like we're working together, even though we might be working individually on these projects. Uh, you know, another question of, I'm already doing fractional CMO, so why would I need something like Grow? And we can talk about that. Um, by the way, the answer is um, when you have to turn away business because you're working on stuff or you're trying to be a fractional CMO and you can't find business, those peaks and valleys are, are very challenging as a, as a, a lone wolf. Uh, and so being a part of the Grow Army uh, really can make a difference. So this webinar is coming up. If you go to... Uh, growpowerful.io forward slash fears and myths. And I think we're going to put that in the comments here uh, or in the chat uh, here so that you have it. Um, again, growpowerful.io forward slash fears and myths. Um, there's a form there. We're actually going to be doing all of our webinars via Vimeo now. So it'll be a fun experiment for us to try. Uh, speaking of MarTech. Uh, the other you know, fear and myth is like, well, I'm an expert in maybe uh, FinTech or PropTech and I'm not an expert in others. And so we'll talk about that as well during the webinar. If any of this sounds interesting, if you're like, you know, I, I'm happy to have a quick conversation. Uh, let's chat. Here's my Calendly link. Uh, we're also going to put that in the chat window as well. Uh, but for those of you that are on the podcast, it is calendly.com forward slash digital Brett forward slash 15 men, M-I-N. Um, you know, would love to have a conversation with you. And if you want to explore the ideas, if you're in a full-time role and you want to sort of just kick the tires a little bit, but maybe it's a year or two out, uh, would love to hear from you. Um, I am looking for, Grow is looking for fractional chief marketing officers. And we're looking for people that are not at the end of their career, that are looking to do this to avoid retirement or avoid sunsetting. We're looking for people that may have had one or two wins, have established relationships, and are at the at really the peak of their career. Um, you know, we're not looking for, um, you know, people on the way out, uh, and that's a big difference with us uh, versus I think a, a lot of other fractional CMO environments. Is we're looking for people at the early part of the top of their game. Uh, we're looking for people with ideas and energy. We're not looking for. Um, you know, tried and true. This is the way it's been done before. Um, that's not what our emerging stage, uh, early and emerging stage companies and VC backed and PE backed companies are looking for. So that's, that's basically it. Would love to have you on our next webinar, which is taking place uh, again, uh, March 1st at 11 a.m. Uh, we'll also have it on our podcast. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, please send them my way. Again, my, I'm Brett and Brett at growpowerful.io. And uh, yeah, we spent about 20 minutes here and I just want to say thank you and hope you have a fantastic day. And if there's anything else we can do for you, let us know. Thank you.